Morning, folks. I'm David Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. Back out here with another in our segment, 10 Minutes to Better Land Nav. Yesterday, we planned a route. We ran out there and we did the route to verify how it worked out for us. And that was a really good experiment that you can do on your own by planning a route on a map, especially if it's an area that you're fairly familiar with. And then you can kind of test your own skills to see how you do. And it works really, really well. And that's kind of a lot of what we do here at the school during some of our navigation exercises, especially in the more advanced classes like intermediate and land nav intensive, things like that, is that we have students plan routes and then they go out and they do those routes and see how they come out. And then we compare those to the actual map when they come back. Now, what we need to go to now is we need to start talking about grid coordinates and the grid system. And the reason for that really is if you're just planning a route on the map like we did yesterday, then you have no reason to even know any of this. However, if you are going to give someone a certain location on the map that you want them to find you or that you want them to go to, or someone could give you a particular location on the map and tell you to go here to find this or that, then you need a grid coordinate on that map that will get you very close to the object that you're looking for. And when you start dealing with a GPS, you're also going to deal with grid reference systems like the military grid reference system. And so when you set your GPS up, and we'll talk about that a little more, programs that we use and things like that, you're going to be seeing those numbers and they're going to come up a lot. And so if you convert those numbers from, say, take them from a GPS, try to put them on a map, you're going to need to kind of understand what you're looking at. All right. So some of this is very arbitrary to what we really need to worry about when we're doing map work. But the last part of this is important. But understanding the rest of it so it at least makes sense to you is important as well. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look at a number that's going to come up. Let's say I just drug a spot onto my GPS, and it shows me the grid coordinate for where that X is on my GPS. What you're going to come up with is you're going to come up with something that looks like this, 17SLD6896-2262, right? And there's a lot to understand with that. Really, the only thing we need to concern ourselves with are these numbers right here, okay? But for sake of understanding, let's talk about the first part of this as well. The 17 is the zone of the world that you're in. The S is your latitude band on the globe. The L and the D are your column and row for the military grid reference system, which the world has broke into military grids. Okay, And then these grid coordinates break it down to 1,000 meter squares. If I remember right, these MGRS uh, letters are 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers, if I remember right. And then we're breaking this down to 1,000 meter squares on our map. So if we have a map and we know we have the correct sheet and all of those things that we need to be in the area that we're looking at, then really all we need to worry about is these numbers right here, these eight digit grid coordinate that's at the end of that thing. And sometimes depending on how you have your GPS set up, you may have a 10 digit grid coordinate there, but you can't plot a 10 digit grid coordinate with a protractor. We're gonna talk about that in a minute and how these grid coordinates work on a map, okay? But I wanted to get this information out to you first so you had a basic understanding of what these letters and numbers mean prior to the actual grid coordinate itself. Okay. So, my dyslexia gets the better of me sometimes, too. So, let's just make sure that we are on the same page with what's what here. When you look at these numbers, the 68, 69, these are our grid identifiers, and these are running to the east, getting larger, and these are our easting numbers. These numbers, 22, 23, and so on, are northing numbers, and they are getting larger as you go north. So measuring right and up, we're always going to go easting and then northing. One thing I want to show you as far as breaking these grids down is I've got a tool here that kind of shows that really well from maptools.com. And if you lay this on top of a grid square, it breaks that grid square down now into 100 meter squares. All right. Using an actual map scale or map protractor like this one from Pathfinder, you have a dot right here, and this is so that you can locate grid coordinates or also put this on a particular spot. And then you have a protractor on here for plotting azimuths on the map. 
So if we take this and we put it in the corner, understanding that we're reading right and up, so this grid square is 68.22. You always give the easting number first and the northing number. So 68.22 is this grid square. If we go over five, that means we went over 500 meters. And if we go up then to the five here, and we make sure that the five is on both lines, now we're 500 meters into this grid square east and 500 meters north, or the center of the grid square. If we wanna break that down further or get closer, in this case, the eight digit grid would be 5050, if I'm on the right line here. So 68, 50, 22, 50. If we wanna break that down or we're not on an actual line, then we can break that down into the 10 meters by calling it, let's say we go over two and up a couple. Now we're at 520 or 50, 520 meters by 520 meters into that grid square. So we take a random dot here, say this one right here, and we put our protractor on it, okay? And we know that we're in the 6822 grid square. We went easting five, four. So 540 meters in there. So you have six, eight, five, four, and two, two, three, two, 320 meters up to that point. So that gives us a way of breaking it down so that we're within 10 meters of a target if we break it down into millimeters, if we don't end up on a solid number like this. All right, then it becomes just a zero, three zero in this case, and four zero in this case. Now, if we take a random point on the map, and we'll just say this trailhead right here, we wanna find out what the grid coordinate for that is. We first look at our easting number, which is in the 70 right here, and it's in the 22 here. So 70, 22, are going to be our grid identifiers. From that, we're going to start here in the corner and go 70 over to here, which is gonna give us 7045, so 7045, and that's our easting. Then our northing would be 22, seven, between six and seven there. Well, you could call it either one and you'd be fine. Again, you're only talking 10 meters. So seven, six, so 68, 46, 22, 76 would be the grid coordinate for that point. The easy way to remember that is when you look at your line here, you're going always right and up. So right is gonna get you here. And that is your easting number and then up from the bottom of that grid square is gonna get you here, and that's going to give you your northing numbers, okay? Okay guys, that was just a quick video on how our MGRS grid system, UTM grid system works on our map, how to actually plot those grids on the map, or identify those grid numbers on the map to give them to someone else. It's something that you can practice at home very easily just by taking a map, taking a GPS, and plotting grid coordinates and then comparing them to a GPS to see how close you get. If you're getting close to your GPS, then you're doing it right. It's a very simple exercise and I encourage you to practice it. That way if someone ever gives you a grid coordinate, you have to give one to someone else, you understand how to do it. For normal route planning purposes and things on a map that you're going out and scout for a hunt or something like that or go on a hunt, you really don't need it. But it's always good to have that practice and that reference with you because if you had to call for rescue for some reason, you could do it by phone or anything like that. Giving someone that UTM grid can get them to you much, much faster than if they're looking for you all over the map by some terrain feature that you're giving them. All right, guys, listen, I appreciate you joining me for this quick video on grid coordinate systems and how they're set up and how to utilize them to pinpoint areas and locations on your map. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back to another video in this series as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.